AFL Riverina TV. The business end of the season is fast approaching in both the Farrah League and the RFL. The Premiers are under pressure. Joining me to have a look at this week's round, we have Paul Harbel, the AFL Southern New South Wales Community Football Manager, and from the Rock, Yurong Creek, President Gav Hoffert. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, Simon. Before we get into the fixtures, Paul, uh, a bit of detail about a community initiative that's being supported by AFL Riverina this weekend. Yes, well, uh, this weekend, the Forest Centre Palliative Care uh, Committee, we, the, each club is uh, going to support the, the palliative care uh, fundraising uh, initiative. So all the clubs this week will get posters, they'll get some uh, raffle books to sell. They're going to do that across a number of weeks. So we're very, very... Uh, pleased that we can support the palliative care. It's an important uh, issue within communities and Tony Balding and his uh, uh, committee have done a wonderful job in setting up the appeal and we'll, we'll work through it with all the clubs and, uh, and we know that we'll get the support of the football clubs like they have done in the past for any uh, fundraising activities. Great to see the clubs getting on board with that one. We'll uh, take a look at what's happening on field. First, the OAMPS Farrah League. The Rock up against Collie Ambley. Collie beat Tamora last week and have pretty much firmly stamped themselves as contenders. What do you make of the Blues? Uh, good side, yeah. They've got some really good players in their side. They, um, they've got some really big blokes that are really hard to match up on. So, but unfortunately, I'll be tipping the Rock this week. <laughs> Hubs, we've been talking about you know the top two for a lot of the year with Tamora and Mara. Collie definitely have to factor into those conversations now. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, Gav's talked about the big fellas, but they've got a couple of handy little blokes in Guest and uh, Canard that have come into their side this year. So, and they were in their best players and they have been for a number of weeks. They're goal kickers as well. Oh, look, I, there's no doubt that you'd like to pick the Rock at home, but I think uh, Collie might be a bit too strong. And uh, and I've watched the, the Rock play a few times this year. And look, they're thereabouts, but it's just the injuries and a bit of depth. But I just think Collie would be too good this week. Mara up against Tamora this week. Mara coming off the back of a loss. There's both teams coming off the back of a loss. Hubs, have Mara got the wobbles? Uh, I've seen Mara play because uh, a number of times because my son's there. But look, I think one of the Mara's biggest problems is their decision making and their, their, their fleet of foot players. They don't have enough. And obviously North Walker Open exposed them on Saturday to that because they did have a lot of good running players across the ground and... Uh, and I think Mara have found wanting there a bit. And they've, they've got a few injuries, sure. But I think Clint Taylor being out, he, he holds the back line together and works really hard. Uh, this will be a fantastic game. Look, if Mara are going to be uh, any good in the final series and have any hope, they're going to have to really push Tamora this week and they're going to have to play a better brand of football because Tam Tamora certainly will, will run through the midfield and create opportunities up forward. Gav, you guys have obviously had a great rivalry with Tamora over the last couple of years. What are your thoughts on what Mark Kruger's been able to do with the Roos? Uh, he certainly brought the best out of their footballers. Um, they've got some great kids there. They've always had great kids there, and they've certainly put some uh, some big boys around them, Harpley and Wallace, um, Chris Stacey in the ruck. But he's probably, as I spoke before about, you know, asked me about the what it was 10 years ago that was the difference in football. It's just the, the professionalism and the structures that he's, he's brought in their clubs. So yeah, He's a good coach, and he's certainly coaching them boys well at the moment. Now, East Wagga, they're up against North Wagga. It's a chance for these two sides to build who are pretty much just in, t in touch with the other uh, top three sides. What do you make of this one, Arbs? Uh, I think this will be probably the game of the round, even though we've got uh, Mar and Tamora. But I think from a ladder perspective, East Wagga and North Wagga are out. Gumley will be the, the game of the round. I mean, obviously, Geffert's in form with eight on the weekend, uh, and they'll use him up forward. But I... North Wagga, just watching North Wagga on the weekend, as I said, their fleet of foot players are a very good use of the ball's fantastic. They're well led by Dowdle. Um, and I, I just think this will be a fantastic game. But then again, East Wagga at home, it's a big ground. I think whoever uses the ground the best, and uh, depending on conditions as well, uh, it'll, it'll be a cracker of a game. Two sides that are definitely on the up. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah it's North Wagga. I sort of follow them closely, obviously. And, uh, played there previously and... Um, I think if it dries up, obviously a bit more rain coming this week, but if it dries up, North Wagga certainly going to have that advantage with them as well. So I'd probably tick, yeah, probably East Wagga out there. Good game, though. Lastly, CSU up against the Northern Jets. CSU obviously looking towards next year, but going along quite well, still putting in some good performances, but hard to tip against the Jets in this one, Harps? Oh, no doubt. I mean, CSU have had them in a different year, there's no, no doubt. They've lost players, and but... To their credit, they turn up each week, they have a go. Uh, it's at their home ground. You never know. 
they might turn up and uh, have a few extra players in this week out of injuries, etc., etc. But they don't have the depth, obviously, this year. Northern Jets, you know, they, they weren't badly beaten on the weekend and they've got some very consistent players playing in their side. I think Northern Jets, even though it's at CSU, will be too strong. Got a tip for that one, Gav? Yeah, I'll be going with the Jets. We'll take a look at the RFL fixtures in a moment, but first let's take a look at the standings for the Southern Ag Grain Goal Kicker of the Year Awards in the Farrell League. Matt Wallace leading the charge with 40 goals. The interesting one there for mine is Mark Geppert with 39. Pretty impressive, uh, Harbs, considering he missed quite a few games through injury earlier in the year. Oh, look, there's no doubt. He's a proven goal kicker. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the difference in, in the, the competitions, and Gav would probably back me up here, is that you know, there's a, they move the ball very quickly in the RFL and they can get it into forward line structure a lot quicker than probably they do in the far and it's a lot more scrappy. Probably the kicks into into your forward forward 50 are not as good as you'd, you'd like to think sometimes. But look, the games that he's missed, um, he, he's certainly a proven goal kicker and will do very well. I mean, Wallace from Tamora, tall, agile forward, he'll kick a few more goals before it's all finished. But it's interesting, there's, there's not too much in the goal kicking in the Farrow League this year and... Uh, each club is is represented by CSU, I think there, and uh, or the Rock. But you know, there's some proven goal kickers within those five or six top top line players. Gav, the names that are mentioned there are probably the ones that you guys are keeping an eye on every week. Yes, well, obviously Gafford, he's uh, he's won the RFLs for the past four or five years, so no one Gafford would certainly like to win it again this year. Yeah. So he'd be certainly striving to, to overtake Wallace and. Yeah, and, and hopefully win it for himself, yeah. Thank I think you. they're, sorry, they're signed too. You know, you see Bradley Turner, who's, he's had a lot of injuries this year and, uh, and just watched him across the journey this year. He should be higher on the goal-kicking ladder based on he misses a hell of a lot of goals. <laughs> <laughs> they need some kick, he's kicking boots on, but takes some really strong marks. And, you know, you can see, cl see clubs there that are featuring, you know, two, two or three clubs in the top ten goal-kickers. So they've got some goal-kicking power. Take a look at the RFL after round 12. Brent Aho leading the charge with 38 goals, eight goals clear. And I guess uh, that says a lot about how Colin, uh, Colin Gully are performing this year, Harbs. I oh, no doubt. Brent's a, a very good player. I saw him play in the interlude clash down at uh, Tokemore. Strong hands. He's very agile. You know, he, he leads up the ground. And uh, as I said, he has got strong hands. A very good kick for goal. And he's, he's certainly their focal point for the gully. You know, Mitch Steele, again, he's a guy when you talk about injuries with blokes like Get, but Mitch Steele in the RFL has been an injured of hell of a lot too. So, you know, he, he's a proven goal kicker. And you go down the list and, you know, your Lou Robertses and, you know, you've got a small man in Cots leading the charge for, for Gan Main. And uh, I think that says, we'll touch on it later, I think it says that that's one of the problems with Gan Main at the moment, it's their goal kicking power. But, you know, Chris Gordon with 20 odd goals. So, it's a good effort with uh, the gully having, uh, you know, both Brent and Chris in the, in the top five. We'll take a look at the O-Amps RFL. Round 13 kicking off with Griffith up against Kuhlman. Two massive losses for the Hoppers and now a, a tough road trip to Griffith who are only a win outside of the top five. How do you see this one playing out, Harps? Uh, I think there's a danger going for Kuhlman. I don't think their form's been that flash. Or they were badly beaten on the weekend. There's no doubt about that. And I think Griffith's form was was pretty good. They pushed. It was a tight game for three quarters over in the, in Griffith. Uh, hard, Always hard to beat over in Griffith. There's no doubt about that. They've come into a bit of a form. Kuhlman would need to turn it around a little bit. I know they're probably struggling with a few injuries, but I, I just don't think their form's up there at the moment. I'm going to tip Griffith in a, uh, in, a in an upset here, but obviously Kuhlman would be smarting that they uh, they got badly beaten on the weekend. Tip for that one, Gav? I think Kuhlman are going to be fairly hurt in the last two weeks, so they'll uh, have a good thing on the, on the trip over. And uh, They're the premiership premiers from last year, so I'll tip Kuhlman. Narendra is up against Colin Gully. Now, any hopes that the Demons had of flying under the radar well and truly gone after their 10th straight win? They're going to be very hard to uh, stop this year, aren't they? Oh, there's no doubt about that. They're very well coached. They've got very good structures. I mean, the Kennedy boys, they're all, uh, they're all playing extremely well. But around the ground, they've got, really, they're just, they've got a really good set of players all across, across the park, backs, forwards, midfielders. You know, even their interchange players are handy when they come on. So, you know, they, they, they are a good side. Naranda, a very good win on the weekend against the Lions. And, uh, you know, I don't think the Lions expected they would be beaten by that much. They certainly spoiled the party over there at Madong, didn't they? They certainly did. But uh, oh, Naranda, look, they use their big ground very well. But Colin Gully have played there a number of times. I, I, I think this will be a good game. But considering, you know, the win, Naranda will have some really... They'll be, they'll be up and about after their win on the weekend. Whereas uh, 
Gully are, are going very well, they're low key, and I think Gully too strong for Naranda even at Naranda. We'll move on to Wagga Tigers up against Turvey Park. A big game for the uh, the old arch rivals. How do you see this one going? Uh, look, I, th I think another good game. Uh, Wagga Tigers, though, they've come back to some form. You know, uh, they're getting some players back as well. And Turvey Park, look, they've been thereabouts during the season, but they just they string a couple of wins together, then they fall away against lesser opposition, I suppose. But I think Tigers too strong against Turvey this week. What about you, Gav? Yeah, one of my old clubs, Tigers, yes. Um, I, I think they'll be too strong for Turvey Park here. Yep. We'll move on to the last game of the round. Gammain up against Leeton. Gammain will be smarting after that loss last week, won't they, Harves? Oh, there's no doubt about that. I don't know what Cops will be doing. He'll be pulling his hair out, I'd say. But, look, they have had some injury problems. And uh, But, look, Leeton are in a rebuilding phase as well. I think Gammain really need to come out this week and prove that they can play in the finals because the latter, the way it sits at the moment, it's very tight. Um, you know, then somebody could sneak in from outside, but uh, the way the points look, it's, it's highly unlikely. But I think Ganmain at home this week against against the Crows will be too strong. But uh, Luton Witten certainly won't go over there not having a go. What do you reckon, Gav? Yeah, well, I think if Ganmain lose and Turvey have a win, it certainly opens up the, the door for Turvey Park. So it's certainly a must-win game for, for Ganmain. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the weekend's footy. Very good. Thank you.